Oh, I think, as we've spoken about previously, we sort of knew we were going OK without getting results on the scoreboard. The 15-minute the lapses that we saw in the North Melbourne game and at various other stages during our other performances were were costing us and we're probably being controlling the ball a little bit more as compared to rushing. You know, sides are, have a tendency to try and play fast, but we can just manage to maintain possession of the ball. It you know, works in our favour sometimes. So that was probably the big one for us. The men grinding really mature wins. They haven't been spectacular, but... Maturity coming through in the group. Yeah, I think so. As we spoke about, you know, in the Collingwood game, Port Adelaide game, this one, it, it's it's a great sign for our for our leaders to stand up. You know, they're they're playing good, consistent football for a longer period of time, which is really important for a side. You know, pushing forward. Um, for us, they're they're good wins. They're they're not like you said, they're not pretty wins, but they're it's good to win ugly. I thought we were probably beaten around the contest at various stages, especially stoppage early. I think we were uh, down by seven or eight at, at half time, and we challenged our midfielders, you know, Trent and his leaders in Brett and Ivan, and, and they stood up and we ended up, I don't think we won, but we, we, we equalised pretty much, I think, in the second half, which was really pleasing to win. Contested ball, clearances, and tackles in the second half, I think, helped get us over the line. Yeah, bit, bits and pieces. I think, you know, what, what you've got to do is you've got to roll the dice. You know, we knew they were going to continue to try and come through the corridor. We just had to make sure we had protection through there. Um, probably the thing that didn't help us is we, we just we got outmarked inside 50 a lot tonight. And I think that, you know, we knew if we could restrict their defensive 50 scoring, we'd have a fair chance to win. First quarter, they get zero goals. Third quarter, they get two. And last quarter, they get one. So it, the game started to, to turn on its head as a result of those intercept marks. And, you know, they're tall boys, those guys, and they're quality players. The leaders uh, outside the club last year were probably criticised at times. How important have they been in terms of the turnaround in the last few weeks? Yeah, probably unfairly at stages. You've got to remember at various stages we haven't had leaders in the side. You know, we, even this year we've had, you know, our injury list at various stages has not been something we, we reflect upon, but, you know, our leaders haven't been playing. So, you know, it's no coincidence that they're all of a sudden all in the side playing together that we start to win some, some footy games, and the same as last year. So they're really important players to us. They give us good structure. They give us good leadership on the ground, and they're... Um, they're improving week by week. Three for three since uh, Delirio came back. Yeah. It's been a huge addition for him. Yeah, he's an important player. He just provides the flexibility that we probably didn't have before. You know, we can play him deep forward, up the ground and on ball, uh, whereas previously we probably lacked that. You know, there's not many sides going around at the moment with four first-year players in it. We're one of them, which is really exciting for our, our footy club going forward you as well. You about Koshy, Delirio and Martin, but uh, Brandon Ellis always seems to be a bit underrated. Yeah, he is. He's um, he won the award tonight, which he's probably a player that's that's found what works for him with regard to his work rate. You know, he covers covers an enormous amount of ground. His contested ball work has, has dramatically improved. We've been really pleased with that, um, and he's growing into the player we thought he'd be. Um, you know, another guy continue to improve also is Nick Loston as well. You know, he's slowly becoming the new brand and Ellis for us. So we're really excited by the progression of those players and the players that continue to you know, play their role around them, which is really important. You, you talk about grinding out wins. How close do you think you are to, to reaching the Oh, listen, I still think we're, we've got some areas that we can work with today. We probably, at, at various stages, a little bit too careful just going down the line when we tried to go against that because Essendon were just marking everything inside at various stages. So we, we, we've got some work to do, like all those other sides around us as well, where, where the coaches are always looking for perfection, but unfortunately we never never quite get it. How much are you looking forward to the Dockers? Yeah. It's probably a good time to get you on the right Oh, it's exciting. You know, Friday night footy, they, they won again tonight. I think they're up by 14 points uh, just prior, so they're still undefeated. So it just gives us a really good opportunity to see where we're at. They're a quality side, obviously, and you know, they're very hard to beat at home, but you know, we play well there and we travel well. So we're looking forward to the challenge, very much so. Who do we have coming back? 
<laughs> yeah, I don't think he's, we haven't got many left at the moment. <laughs> uh, look, I think Ty, Ty might be a chance, which will be exciting. He's, uh, he's going back to Icy's, Icy's foot knee or whatever it is now. So, um, yeah, we've, we've probably got the, the guys that were in there. We've got a couple of guys at, at the lower level that play well today, but unfortunately they, they got beaten. So, yeah, we'll have to assess that going forward. Yeah, I'm storming out now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, not one of my finer moments, mate, to be perfectly honest, but yeah, it's one of those things, but we're to discuss the game, so we'll move on pretty quickly, Steve-O. <laughs> you shake your head, Yeah, it's hard to believe. You know, we um, were drafted the same year. He, he's a father-son, obviously, and me at the highly regarded pick of 87. <laughs> um, but he, you know, I've been out of the game for 10 years. It's staggering, and, you know... Uh, Funny as it was, from a coaching move, we were trying to take him away from the ball. He just kept getting an arm in there. He's an incredible player, incredible athlete, great fella too. You wouldn't mean to find a find a man on the footy field, and you know it's a it's a credit to him and his family. And you know I'm glad he played well, and I'm glad we spoiled the party. But yeah, he's a great fella. Liam, oh, he competed well. You know he came to me at three quarter time after we. Um, he moved him off and said, how did he go? go? And I said, listen, you, you're OK. He was OK without being great, but he's playing against a guy that's got, what, how many years' experience uh, on him. So it's a real learning curve for Liam. We think he's going to be a special player for us. He's going to take some time, a bit like Joey Danaher tonight. They're going to have their ups and downs, but, yeah, he's going to improve. He's going to learn a lot from it. Thanks, guys. Thanks.